Now you'll notice here, there's the cycle again, and uh, no metamorphosis. It's got an incomplete life cycle. And um, it all happens usually at night. It's why, it's, it's why you don't see people using these things during the day. <coughs> Now there is some um, naturals on the back of the finger there, and that is the imitation that that, that Nick Hall uses. It's just a sl slither of uh, black foam. That's all he uses. Lifts up the foam and puts a hacker around it, and that's it. So again, if you're learning how to tie flies, and you're going to buy these for two dollars fifty each. You can make those in seconds. <coughs> Stone flies, as we said, two wing cases, two tails, and there's a couple of them. That was one we tied actually at one of our tie-ins with the club. And there's, the, and there's another one there. But in the USA, they have huge stonefly nymphs, huge things. Here, they're fairly laid back. So again, <clears throat> tie yourself a heron cop copper and the fish won't know if it's a stonefly <laughs> or a mayfly. So I'm just emphasising, first fly the tie, heron cop, heron cop copper. Moving on to midges now. Now notice they have a complete life cycle because they pupate, and they pupate in soft mud. So you see the, the they call them blood, uh, blood worms. I don't think we fish the blood worms all that much. And then we have the larva, um, and then the pupa. And the pupa sort of hangs in the surface of the film, and then the adult, the adult takes off. Now, you wouldn't want to try and imitate the adults because they're not much about half the size of a mosquito, <laughs> yeah, like a mosquito. But what happens is, they, this is not mating behaviour, it's more like swarming behaviour, but they form balls. And we used to talk about midge balls <laughs> in the club, and they was a funny big midge. But, but, but they do form a, a midge ball. <coughs> and I remember going away with a group of guys and uh, and they were boring. You could, you could see little balls you know, rolling along the surface of the water. So the ideal rig is a midge ball with a, a, a pupa hanging underneath it. So there's, oh, and the, the British, the palms again, they call them buzzers. Because I guess they buzz like a mosquito, I suppose. But there's a classic you know, imitation for a larva. And there's a, a pupa there. This was pre, pre, um, um, pre the days of, um, oh, pre epoxy days. I have to say, it looks like epoxy, right? But it's not. It's actually acetate, acetate um, floss. And then when you apply acetone. To acetate floss, it melts it and turns it into this. Yeah. And there's your classic midge ball, and the palms again, they call them a Griffiths gnat. It's nothing to do with an ant, but they call it a Griffiths gnat, a midge ball. So, I'm going to tie a couple of those. And as I say, seeing as we winter, let's tie a midge pupa and a midge ball. Now, if you go to Buckendera and you go around to Wainui Bay, is it? it sounds, sounds Wainui, like yep. Wainui, Wainui yep. Bay. I was around there with the club on an outing once, and uh, there were midges everywhere, mm. everywhere, because it's very mud, muddy that bay, and um, and uh, that was the standard rig that we were using. There was a midge ball with a cooper underneath it. So.
quickly tie one of those. So. I'm going to tie this on a curved hook. Okay, so we'll do the... Now I'm going to cheat here with this one. I've got a collection of... of of, of these in metho at home and they range from like <clears throat> olive greens, reds, halfway between a red and a green, browns, the, the colours vary. using here gents I'm using fine copper wire as a thread you know what I, I have a committed a sin I left out a step and what I'm going to do in fact I'll use the same I'll use the same fly that's what I'll do now these have breathers Winding radius smaller, David. But a bobbin here that's a little bit loose. That's better. Okay. So I'm just going to tie in the breather. I might just make it a bit thicker. We'll do that. Normally we use polypropylene for this. I'm using a bit of um, Enrico Pagliusi's fibres. So we're just going to put this. See my angle wrapping there, folks? Holding it up, holding it up an angle, keeping it on top of the hook. Oh, that hook's sharp. Okay. So there's the breather one end, and there's my breather at the other end. In fact, it almost used it the way it is with the way it looks. <laughs> Got a bobbin misbehaving itself here. Can you edit that please? <laughs> Winding it up, ended up between the legs. Talk to the editing department. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now I'm just going to move that to there. I'm going to put on a half hitch just to get it out of the way. I'll cut my thread. back to my copper wire. Just 
That's a, a loose wrist. I'm not going to crank with my whole arm. I've got to keep a nice loose wrist. Looking down at an angle of about 45 degrees. Most experienced tyres, when they sit there down to tie a fly, it's like they're hopping into the into this, the seat of their car, and they adjust the height of the seat and until it just feels right. And a lot of beginners don't get that for a while. So you see an experience that tie, they sit down and to just adjust the height of the vice, or adjust the height of the table, or adjust the height of the chair. Just so you're looking down at about 45 degrees. We sent a couple of guys earlier, pedestal vices, you can't adjust their height, so it's got a big long stem. Beginners do this, you see them winding with their arms horizontally outstretched, with line of sight horizontal rather than line of sight at a slight angle downwards. You'll never be able to, to rip right or palmer right unless you're looking down onto the fly. Okay, so that looks good. And then we just put a little, little bit of peacock hurl again. I'm using the, the torque of the thread there. I didn't use a pinch wrap. Building up a bit of a, a bit of a head here. Dropping the bobbin over the top. And cutting this off horizontally here. Okay. And this time you see I can't use a half hitch tool because this is in the way. See, see that? Yeah. So I've, I've got to use now my, my whip finish tool. Now remember the chant, hook down, hook down, hook down, anti-clockwise around the D10. One, two, three. Oh look, at I, I, use, I, use, I did that with copper wire then. Not bad, eh? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and there we have our. Well, it's a bit rough on the screen, isn't it? Gee, a lot of sins there. I would have, I should have the shape of the body better. It should have been thicker towards the head, more of a carrot kind of a shape towards the body. That would not win a fly tying comp. We will catch fish. <laughs> Yeah. It, would, it would catch fish. <laughs> so there's the pupa. And now we're going to tie... And now we're going to tie a Griffiths gnat. What size hook, Dave? I am using... I'm using... Oh, uh, these would be 14s. Just a matter of interest, to see... I've got these into an, an old style English hackle plier to save me dropping hooks. Now with hackle pliers, these are the old English style as you know, where you op open them and close them like that. I like to put a, put a bit of heat shrink on them to stop the, to ensure that, that they work well. But uh, to be honest, if you're going to set yourself up with gear, Buy yourself a rotating hackle plier. It makes your life a lot easier, particularly when it comes to dubbing loops and things along those lines. Okay, so Griffiths mat. Do a test 
exercise of that right. I'm sorry, Craig? Oh, it's just a, a um, it's just a gristle hackle. Oh, the width. Oh, well, I'm, I'm making it. I, I want the gate to be reasonably full yep. at the end of the day. Yep. And again, peacock hurl, as you can see, is a certain material that you have a couple of materials you've got to buy. Peacock hurl and copper wire are two musts. Is, is peacock hurl readily available again? Usually in two dollar shops and what have you, I find. Oh, because yeah. it went, so you struggled to get it for a while. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because they weren't bringing it in from the states. Oh, okay. There was some sort of artificial yeah imitation places. Let's imagine you were two dollars. Hey, guys, don't get a hair extension to the eyes. I'm sorry. The oh yes. Well, I'm using a standard hackle here off a cape rather than a saddle hackle, which is one of those very long, straight ones where you're able to tie a number of flies out of each, each hackle. Okay, so I've got down the base now of, of my peacock hurl. I'm going to cheat here now. I'm not going to waggle it. Okay. To my rotating hack apply here, it makes my life makes my life a lot easier. Ooh, see that? Ooh, I'm just going to pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> oh dear, not a good look, is it? Normally I just start again now, but <laughs> oh dear. I don't think midge balls are usually the prettiest looking things. <laughs> no, I, I should have I should have half hitched that, and, and and it would have been okay. So so it's a bit of a mess, but I think you see here, if you're taking up fly tying for the first time, you'll do exactly what I did. <laughs> Clean up the front of this a bit. Yes, I think I would probably do a couple of a couple of passes there. Oh gee. <laughs> Look at this, it's coming undone around there. Yeah. I used to tie these without the peacock hurl, for, for good reason. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Now there's one without the peacock hurl. <laughs> and I'll just, do, I'll just do a slight, slight trim here. That's a better look now. That's good. That's good. Thank you.